Hello and welcome to my channel and thank you for being here. If you just joined or if you've been here for longer, um, thank you for your presence. Yeah, today, today is a different day because I'm answering your prayers and your questions. How to start playing violin? What do I start with? Oh, I've got two beauties to unpack and review. Ta-da! When I was a child, I used to pretend I was a lion and um, back then I just used to take everything and open it with my own teeth. True story. Look at that. Easter violin. You do not need expensive instrument to begin with. magical. 4-4, four, four. it says the size of the violin and it's blue. Blue used to be my favorite color. I think I love it still but black I think took over. And what do we have here? Whoa! Look at that! Ooh. That one is without learning points. That's all oh, excitement. So you've got zip. That goes here. You can put all your music in. It comes with nice flannel. Oh, and that's the tricky part for everybody. That color. I've always dreamt about red violins. Most of you are probably now petrified, thinking, how on earth do I assemble this? And we will try to get through this. Tip number one, try not to touch. This is called the body, the body of the violin is because it will like leave the marks and your, there is a lot of uh, grease on your fingers and that just goes into the la lacquer and just leaves nasty stains all over the violin. Okay, so we've got violin. Whoa! We've got a shoulder rest. This is not branded shoulder rest, but to be honest, as a beginner, I don't really care. As long as you have it, that's a heaven, because I will show you what the difference is in holding violin with a shoulder rest and without. Of course, there are people who prefer to play without a shoulder rest. I personally think that before you become comfortable with a violin enough, um, to hold it without a shoulder rest, you should have one because otherwise you're gonna end up like this. Oh, blimey, that was quick. We've got a bow. It has not been rosined, so it's all very sleek, it's still clean. Well, you shouldn't touch it with your hands again because it just gets uh, greasy and you need to put a lot of rosin on the bow. Okay, so we've got bow, shoulder rest, wow. We have E-Star, may the music be with you. E-Star, has the brand. Wow, we have a tuner, clip-on tuner. That is such a great, great news because, oh, and the battery included, man, everything, everything you don't have to worry about it. And we have set of spare strings. String set, set de cuerdas, master series. I'm not going to open them because the violin already comes with the strings. This is like a dream. I need to double check what the price of this violin is, but you'll find in the link down, down below. I think it's less than $100 and you get rosin, right? Designed in Italy. Violin, a tuna, fine tuna, set of strings. And violin with strings, all you have to do is to assemble it. A violin case is black. More serious. You get a case. Ah, you've got slightly different case because you get with only a small compartment here. I'm not sure if that will fit your... Let me get that music. If that, if that will fit your music sheet. Let's try. Just, I would say just. Once you start learning, you will have a few books, you have a notebook with the notes, so you will need like a backpack or a bag 
so you can take it with you. Right, gosh, exciting again. Four, four, perfect. So the full size. Look, that's what you get, okay? That's what you get when you order your violin with learning points. Let's compare those two. So look, look! I mean, this one's got more shading and also learning points. This one is for those who already kind of know how to play, have their ear trained, so they understand where is the sound. Oh, it's slightly different again, different shoulder rests you're getting. Foldable one, just to compare. Yeah, this is like a plastic foldable shoulder rest. You can adjust it, obviously, you know, they've got two buttons and you can adjust everything. And the other one uh, looks slightly more posh. The other one is made of wood. So that one is for the learning points one. And that one is for just normal violin with no learning points. Let me assemble this and show you how to do it because that's the most tricky part, I think. If you do not know how to assemble a violin yourself, you don't want to try and you just feel that you might break it, call someone. Find someone who might do it for you. I'm sure there's a, like a professional, um, someone who, who knows how to do the job and they will do it for you. If you can't ask anyone for help, I'm sure, certain, on YouTube there are millions of tutorials. So what you need to do is obviously take that gently. With violin you, you want to be very gentle. Because although it's not uh, made by a professional, you know, luthier, it, it's still quite fragile. So that is a bridge, right? Bridge. Can you see? The bridge goes from like slightly higher bit here to lower so that will be for your G string and the lower part would be for your E string if I grab my violin now okay you're very lucky that you've got the strings already assembled but you have to be very careful very careful fiddling with the pegs anyway I'm very curious if those learning points are adequate and when you're learning how to play violin, it is so essential that you train your ear so you get the right notes every time. You take the bridge and the bridge goes, because we have four strings, E, A, D and G. Okay, so the thickest one is G, the thinnest one is E. I need to put that, pe that bridge on the violin. So gently, you need to do it very gently to make sure the violin does not snap. And I feel like this one needs to be released a little bit. So if you need to release the, 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 the strings, if they are too tight, you don't pull up, but unscrew it down. And only slightly, only slightly, because they... That's it, like half centimeter maybe. So we place that bridge and we need to assemble that. So just put the bridge up. So roughly where the lines here, we need to put it there, okay? And then move the strings gently. So what we want with the bridge, we want this 90 degrees and you want to make sure that the legs of the bridge is sit nicely on the instrument. What you need to make sure is that it's 90 degrees and it's aligned here with a tailpiece and a fingerboard. It will need a few adjustments. Very gentle when the strings have to be, see they're not, they're very loose and they're not tuned yet. Okay, time for tuning. The tuner, lovely. Lithium battery. Hello. <laughs> Okay, we put it in. What's that? Ah, ah. It doesn't recognize the voice. And now I think you put it in a peg. Mm. So what should be A? It's now F. 
Okay, I'll do it with my ear first, um, and then we will use that. When you turn the pegs, what I do, just in case, I cover, put something, a flannel or a material over the violin, so when I turn the peg, it sometimes the strings may snap if you pull too much. You have to be very, very, very gentle. So when, when you want to make the sound go up, you need to turn it this way. When you want to make sound go down, you turn it this way, toward yourself. So, and when I do it, I slightly push it inside into the vine, but not too much. Again, you have to be very careful. And go just bit by bit, just step by step. You don't want to break the string. You've got a spare set, but still you do not want that to happen because it's just not nice. I might be totally wrong. I don't have the perfect pitch, so let's see. That tells you if I was right or not. Ah, that's it! <gasps> Amazing! Once you've got your A roughly, see? So that's on the lower side. You can use, they are called fine tuners here, those ones. And they literally adjust the sound very slightly. Let me put the shoulder rest on. So the way we put shoulder rest on is um, maybe better when you hold violin upside down. And then you've got the sort of um, shoulder rest goes into like a slight U shape. And then the th or the thicker part, can you see? Like there's a thicker and the thicker and the thinner part. So you just go where your or the place where your chin rest is. You just place that and slide it down, okay? Then you you can adjust, obviously, um, how you want to hold it. And then, voila, on your, on your chin. On your chin? <laughs> on your shoulder! Right, so we've got it, we've got shoulder rest, yeah, we've got... So see, it's a smiley face. Never put it the other way. It goes violin shape. And then you've got the shoulder rest. So we've got A. Now we'll try now. And you see why. Now you see why I insist for people, especially for the beginners, to have the shoulder rest. Because what happens is you place your violin, you put your chin on the violin, see? And you can hold it. Like that's it. And your the space between your shoulders and the chin stays the same. Like you, what you avoid is doing this, because look, if you do not have shoulder rest, you need to hold. Well, this is what happens. You like, you, you need to bring your shoulder up, and what happens? Violin goes to the front. So then, when you grab the bow, which is still in the foil, in my case, and it has no rosin. So I will show you how to put the rosin on too. Um, so, if you don't put rosin on, this is what you're gonna get. So, look what happens. It's basically this kind of position. It's really uncomfortable. So, what I do is just put a shoulder rest. Voila. And I'm free to roam the instrument. So, what I see now, I see. I put my little tuner foot on the peg, and now I can... I can't. Okay, I need to rosin the bow first. Oh, tightening the bow. Blimey, I need to tell you about all those things. So, when the bow is loose, okay, it's just like that. So this is not really possible to play. So what we need to do, we need to tighten the bow. We take the bow like this, okay, take the bow, and one, two, three, four, five, maybe six times, six times we turn to the right, to the right, <laughs> to the right, and then our bow, it's like, it's got slight bounce, so that means we can play 
using it. But then that's not everything because as I, I showed you, without rosin, there's no grip between the violin and the bow. So I need to um, put rosin on. That's the rosin. You have to open it. It can be a bit crumbled. That one is slightly crumbled. And all we need to do, you hold the bow, you try not to touch the bow hair with your fingers because again you've got grease on your hands and you want that beautiful horse hair, I'm guessing it's horse hair. So you just need to rub it in and again you need to remember that horse hair is like every hair, it's got um, little scales and those scales go into one direction. You don't want to destroy the structure of the hair. So if you can just do nice strokes and be careful not to go too abruptly here because you, with that metal bit you can crack the rosin. Oh, I cracked it already. <laughs> it will just start flaking off and being broken. Once you've done that, like get rid of the excess rosin but be careful not to basically break it. Just sort of shake it, shake it off. I guess that's the right word. Close it nicely and put it back straight away. When you first um, sort of tighten the strings, um, they will keep stretching. So you need to keep tuning and adjusting. It will take a few days before they will sort of adjust and stretch totally. But don't try to overwork the pegs because you will just break the string. So look, when I tune it, I tune it, and it's the right A. It looks green. So what I do, I just gently twist those fine tuners. So again, when you twist... <laughs> when you twist this way, so anti-clockwise, it will drop the sound when you click uh, when you twist clockwise it will make the sound go up higher and now I'll tune the rest so I'll just do it without the tuner because then you need to tune D, G and E I always leave E uh, to the last because this is how I was taught I can hear A already gone down. Almost there. Mom, I'm so scared, especially when you tune the E string because it's so thin. I'm always just very worried that will snap. Let me check. I feel it's too low, but. And then I can adjust it with a fine tuner. Right. Now I'll try to tune it. Oh, look what's just happened. Can you see? The hair broke off. So if ever that happens to you, just take the bow and gently pull that hair off. To, to turn these ones too much because that will pin them down and they will start coming too close to the wood and break them so That's it! I assembled the whole violin. What I want to check now is if those checkpoints are in the right place. So I have to imagine I am a beginner violinist learning G major scale. your finger on 
on that thing and it worked. <laughs> practicing make sure make sure you turn that off although for the one with learning points you do not get that one that one you get with the other violin uh, which I will be using to play on my new channel because I want to separate electric violin from acoustic violin and from my art is because as you can see I started painting a while back and writing stories as well so my other channel will be more art channel and I'll be using solely acoustic violin so this is where I'll be using the other one and my original violin so I'm very excited for that new coming project and now of course I will continue posting on Barbara the violinist if you have any questions please comment down below and leave like live <laughs> leave like subscribe Oh blimey, look how dusted it got. We can't see. So once the violin goes back to the case, always take the shoulder rest off. So the violin goes back to sleep and the bow, we need to undo it to make it loose, right? Loose, so the bow can go to sleep too. Shoulder rest, everything is back to the case and secure. If it doesn't come with the cloth, I invite you to purchasing just getting a scarf or something just to cover your instrument here to basically have that protection from dust from the bow. So we just close the case and always remember to zip it, zip your case because I've seen so many violins in the past falling out the cases. It smells brand new, beautiful. Easter, I am smacked. Guys, I do! Assembled violins! And I just want to tell you that E-Star, so the one I've got those violins from, they are on Amazon. I will put the links down below under the video and also to my new channel. Remember to subscribe to be the first one to see my new content there. And they also do, or they specialize in violins because Donna is the main um, brand, but it's like a sub-brand. So Easter specializes in um, violins, brass, woodwind and drum sets and they also have all sorts of accessories on the Amazon so I definitely I can recommend those. I tried them both and they are brilliant for beginners. Remember the most important thing is that you start, that obviously you need an instrument which that's a bargain and you need to be self-disciplined. You need to get your violin out and practice, 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 practice. And practice being mindful and knowing what you want to achieve. And that will take you to the stars. And it takes, unfortunately, a lot of work. But if you love violin, if you want to learn, if you want to play, it's worth it. I want to say big hugs to my previous students that might be watching it and best wishes to the parents that put really big effort for their children to play and to really come prepared for the lessons. So that's like a homage, homage <laughs> for them. Thank you very much. Bye.